In 1991, the incarnate Almighty God came to perform his ministry in mainland China. He has expressed millions of words and commenced his work of judgment beginning at the house of God, shocking every sect and group. As the reach of the kingdom gospel continues to expand, more and more people have come to accept and spread the words of Almighty God. During the time Almighty God appears to do His work, the CCP has never stopped its brutal suppression and persecution of the Church of Almighty God. Many pastors and elders in religious circles have also continued their wild condemnation and resistance. But under the encouragement and guidance of the words of Almighty God, God's chosen people have broken through the suppression of all dark forces and continue to proclaim and bear witness to God's work of the last days. The powerful momentum of the Kingdom Gospel has spread gradually throughout the country. This film tells the story of a person named Zheng Xinjie, a witness of the Church of Almighty God, and her real-life experiences while spreading the God's Gospel in mainland China. Here she is with Yang Mingyu, preaching the Gospel to the house church worker Chen Mingyan and other members. Their fellowship is very enlightening. Thank the Lord. Sister Zheng, Sister Yang, Earlier you said that the most prophesied thing in the Bible is God's judgment work in the last days. There are over 200 passages that tell us that God would return and carry out His judgment. We know that this is true. This prophecy was made very clear in 1 Peter 4.17. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. I think that means God's judgment work is a certainty. Thanks be thank to God. The Lord. Today's fellowship is really very We should thank God. But you seem to say God has returned in the flesh to carry out the work of judgment. This is different from what we've received. We believe that in the last days, Lord would reappear in the spiritual body of the resurrected Jesus. This is also the view of the majority in religious circles. Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We don't understand this concept of the Lord returning and doing His work in the flesh. This is new to us. So could you explain it some more? Brother Chin, that's a very good question. First, I am so glad to see you have affirmed that the Lord's return is to judge and cleanse man. Yes. But the only problem is, you're just not clear on the way He would return. The majority of believers tend to believe that the Lord would reappear to mankind in the spiritual body of resurrected Jesus, which means that Lord would never become flesh as the Son of Man again. So what is the form that the Lord will take when He appears to us to carry out His judgment work? As a spirit, or will it be as God in the flesh? You see, it's the most concerned question for those who believe in God. That's right. Now, our witness that God returns in the flesh to do His judgment work can be found prophesied clearly in the Bible. Right. Let's take a look in John chapter 5, verse 22. The Lord Jesus said, For the Father judges no man, but has committed all judgment to the Son. Now let's look at John 5, 27. And has given Him authority to execute judgment also, because He is the Son of Man. So the Lord Jesus directly said that God would return to earth as the Son of Man in order to carry out His judgment. Any references to the Son or Son of Man are really meant as a reference to the incarnate Christ. You see, Jesus was also referred to as the Son of Man. Born to a human being with a normal humanity, adopting an ordinary and normal person's image to live among people. Because of that, he's called Son of Man, Christ. Right. A 
A spirit cannot be called the Son of Man. We know that Jehovah God is a spirit, so he can't be called a Son of Man. The spiritual body of the resurrected Jesus is not the flesh of God incarnate, so he can't be called the Son of Man either. So you see, if one has the image of a man, but is in the spiritual body, he cannot be a son of man. Their fellowship is very enlightening. Just as the Lord Jesus prophesied, for as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. This is even more proof that the Lord would return to flesh as the Son of Man. Yes. If he were to come in spiritual body, then he wouldn't need to suffer, and he wouldn't be rejected by this generation. A spiritual body is supernatural. Not only would he perform miracles, but any of his commands would immediately come true. And if that were the case, then anyone would follow him. All of the believers, non-believers, and even the devil Satan would worship him. So if that happened, how could the Lord then be rejected by this entire generation? Yeah, I didn't know that. On that note, if a spiritual body came to take the saints, then the believers would be even more unlikely to reject him. Be honest, wouldn't that be so? So just as it says in the prophecies of Jesus, we can be absolutely sure that Jesus would return in the flesh to be the Son of Man once again, to utter his words and to carry out his judgment. Yes. That's very true. He can't possibly assume the spiritual body. We can easily rule that out. That's right. In the last days, God returns as the Son of Man to carry out judgment. It's just like when Jesus came to earth to spread the gospel of the kingdom of heaven. Mankind saw Jesus as just an ordinary Son of Man, but his words and work had authority and power and made people convinced. That's right. Of course, right. Yes. That's yes. right. Yes. And it's from Jesus' words and his work that we can tell that everything he said was in fact truth, making all utterly convinced. Naturally, people believed that Jesus really was sent down by God and was God himself who did God's work. Yes. Oh, that's right. In the same way, when Almighty God comes to do his work in the last days, many people hear God's voice and they all see the truth appears like the light flashing in our world. Everyone will be able to see that the incarnate Son of Man can indeed speak the truth to judge and cleanse the corrupt mankind. That's right. Not only does that happen, but from the truth of the incarnate Son of Man, everyone comes to know the righteous disposition of God. People will begin to revere and obey God in their hearts. And once they can do that, they can be saved and gained by God. Now Almighty God speaks words and does His judgment work beginning with the house of God, cleansing and saving those who have come before God's throne, making them overcomers before the disaster. Right now, the words of Almighty God and the testimonies His chosen people bear after His judgment, cleansing, perfection, are already available on the internet. Yes. They're telling the whole world that Almighty God is exactly the return of the Lord Jesus. Almighty God is the one true God who comes to judge and save all of mankind. Yeah. Just as Almighty God says, I will watch over the whole earth and appearing in the east of the world with righteousness, majesty, wrath, and chastisement, I will reveal myself to the myriad hosts of humanity. Amen. 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 Thank the Lord. Thank, thank the Lord. This fellowship was so practical, I feel so much more enlightened now. Jesus clearly prophesied that he would come as the Son of Man, meaning that God would appear in the flesh to carry out his work. But for this entire time, we had always thought he would return in his spiritual body. That isn't based on Lord's words. It's just something from our imagination. Sisters, if you hadn't come to share the truth with us, we would also be rejected by the Lord, just as the foolish virgins. Thank, Thank God, God for, for his, his guidance. guidance. If these yes. two sisters have not come to fellowship, 
We would still think the returned Lord Jesus would appear in his spiritual body. Thank God for his It looks like there's some real depth behind the preaching of these Eastern Lightning people. They say that in the last days, God has become flesh in order to execute his judgment. And what they've said can be found in the Bible. That means if everyone in our church hears this, then they will all start to follow the Eastern Lightning. So they could possibly steal our entire flock. No, I can't let them do it. Otherwise, I will look incompetent. Who would listen to my sermons after that? Pastor Jun, allow me. Take a seat. <clears throat> Sister Jung, you've testified that God, as the Son of Man, has carried out His judgment work beginning with the house of God. Yes, yes. That's true. And it does conform with the Bible's prophecy. But I don't understand. Is that judgment beginning at God's house? The exact same thing as the judgment before the great white throne in the book of Revelation. We believe that the judgment before the great white throne is meant for all the non-believers who are of Satan. Yes. When the Lord returns, the believers will be taken up into heaven. And then he will send disaster to the non-believers. You see, that is the judgment before the great yes. white throne. That's right. That's so true. Very true. We heard you testify to the start of God's judgment in the last days. But we've seen nothing about God bringing destruction to the non-believers. Right. Mm -hmm. How could it be the same judgment before the great white throne? Why not tell us exactly what that judgment is like? Sister Jung, please try to make this more clear. Okay. Pastor Jun has a good point. If the Lord has truly returned to perform his judgment, then how will the prophecy of the great white throne judgment in Revelation 20 ever actually be fulfilled? And what about the passage that says, he will open the book of life and the books for judging the dead? Please, sister, explain this to us. Sure. That's right, we want to know too. Good question. Anyone who has read through the Bible can understand the judgment from the great white throne in Revelation is a vision of God's judgment in the last days. The incarnate Almighty God expresses the truth to perform His judgment work and begins cleansing and saving mankind. This means that His judgment from the great white throne has already begun. It starts within the house of God. That way God can make a group of overcomers. And then God will send disasters rewarding good, punishing evil, until this evil world has been wiped away. God's judgment from the great white throne will be finished, and He will see it through. Yes. Then God will openly appear, and He will begin a new era. Right now, we can clearly see all the signs, the omens of disaster. Four blood moons have just appeared. The abnormal stars in the sky have warned us of disaster, and even more are on the way. The entire human race knows the truth, that the end of the world is drawing near. Yes, yeah, that's, that's true. true. When the disaster finally comes, anyone who resists God, judges God, or fights against God, as well as the brood of Satan and demons, will face destruction by God's own hand. Now tell me, isn't that the very judgment from the great white throne? Yes, of course. Brothers and sisters, we can see from the Bible's prophecies that God is clearly planning for a secret arrival and an open arrival. When he starts, the Lord will come like a thief, which means God incarnate comes secretly in order to express the truth to do his judgment work. His first task is to make a group of overcomers Yes. that fulfills the prophecy of judgment beginning at the house of God. God's work of judgment in the last days has begun from the moment God incarnate secretly arrived to express the truth and judge all of mankind. Yes. The first step is to pass the judgment beginning at the house of God. By doing that, 
God cleanses and saves all those who come before Him after hearing His voice, making them the overcomers. Then God will return to Zion, and the disasters will begin. He'll use these disasters to punish and destroy this world of old. At that time, God's judgment of humanity will come to its climax. When God openly reappears in the clouds, that means that His judgment will finally be complete. Then there will appear a brand new kingdom of God. This fulfills the biblical prophecy of the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. Just as Almighty God says, in one regard, God's work uses words to conquer all mankind and gain the chosen people. In another regard, His work uses all manner of disasters to conquer all children of disobedience. This is part of God's large-scale work. And only in this way can the kingdom on earth desired by God be achieved without blemish. This is the pure gold of God's work. Within God's Word, the work He will do is summed up very accurately. People can easily understand it. Almighty God's judgment in the last days is the judgment before the great white throne, as prophesied in Revelation. Based on Almighty God's work in the last days, we can also understand what the opening of the Book of Life and the opening of books to judge the dead are all actually all about. If you like, we'll explain. You see, the opening of the books to judge the dead refers to God's judgment of all of those who deny God and even those who dare try to resist Him. This will result in their own condemnation, their punishment, their destruction. And opening the book of life refers to the judgment that begins at the house of God, which means Almighty God Christ of the last days expresses the truth to judge and cleanse anyone who has come before His throne. Yes. These chosen people who accept Almighty God's judgment and are raptured up to Him will be granted God's judgment, cleansing, and true salvation. The judgment that begins at the house of God is to perfect this group before the disaster. Yes. Only this group deserve to be called wise virgins and for sure will have their names recorded in the Book of Life. They are the 144,000 overcomers in Revelation. Yes they will finally enter the kingdom of heaven to inherit eternal life. This fulfills the prophecy in Revelation, chapter 14, verses 1 through 5. And I looked, and see, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and with him an hundred forty and four thousand, having his Father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven, as the voice of many waters and as the voice of a great thunder. And I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever He goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. When Almighty God does the judgment work, it completely fulfills the prophecy that God will judge while seated on a great white throne. Just as it's mentioned in the book of Revelation, the great white throne stands for God's authority. But how do we get to know God's authority? Yeah, how can we get to know God's authority? As we all know, God created the heavens, earth, and all things with His Word. He uses words to guide us, cleanse us, and save us all, and to accomplish everything. God's own Word represents His authority. His commands will stand. His words count. What He says shall be done, and what He does shall last forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank, the Lord. Thank the Lord. Almighty God's work in the last days is the work of Word. 
He uses his word to control the universe and the whole of mankind. He uses his word to guide and supply mankind. And in the last days, he's using his word to judge and cleanse man. Let's read some passages of God's word. Okay. Almighty God says, I wish to bring people from all the earth to the land of Canaan. Hence, I continue to utter my voice in the land of Canaan to control the entire universe. At this time, there is not light in all the earth apart from Canaan, and all men are imperiled by hunger and cold. And so, during the last days when God becomes flesh, He principally uses the Word to accomplish all and make all plain. All who are wicked will be chastised by the words in God's mouth. All who are righteous will be blessed by the words in His mouth. And all will be established and made complete by the words in His mouth. Nor will He show any signs or wonders. All will be accomplished by His words. And His words will produce facts. Everyone on earth will celebrate God's words, whether they be adults or children, male, female, old or young. All people will submit beneath the words of God. It's so good. Why haven't we heard it before? When Almighty God's word is spoken, it's just like the lightning that flashes from the east to the west. It cleanses and perfects anyone who has returned before God's throne exposes hypocrites, much like the Pharisees who hate it when they are shown the truth, as well as the wicked people who deny and resist God. God also uses His word to strike down all sons of disobedience. The judgment of Almighty God on earth in the last days shows that God is already sitting and ruling upon His throne. Yes. Although this old world of evil and darkness still exists for the time being, very soon, it will be destroyed by the disasters God will send down upon it. No force that exists on this earth can destroy God's kingdom. Neither is there any force that can destroy God's work or that can keep His work from proceeding. Well said. Well said. Well said. Well said. God wielding authority for judgment on earth is the same like His throne being in heaven. It's something no one can shake and something no one can change. We know that's a fact. That's true. Just as Almighty God says, the kingdom is expanding in humanity's midst. It is forming in humanity's midst. It is standing up in humanity's midst. There is no force that can destroy my kingdom. This is the power and authority on display in God's word. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank God. When the word of God rules on earth, it means that Christ rules on earth. This demonstrates that God is already ruling from his throne on earth. This is enough to show that God's kingdom is already on this earth. This is a powerful fact that nobody can deny. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. We can see one thing, that God's will is already done here on earth, as it is done up in heaven. The Lord Jesus said, Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth, as it is in heaven. Revelation 11, verses 15 to 17 also said, And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord, and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and were and are to come, because you have taken to you your great power and have reigned. Amen. These words have become the reality. These are all truths that have been accomplished by Almighty God's work and His mighty judgment. The Thank yes. the Lord. Thank the Lord. Now I understand. What you've just said makes sense. God's judgment that starts with the house of God is the judgment before the great white throne. God has already perfected a group of overcomers. The great disasters will be coming soon. 
And here we are, still waiting for that great white throne to appear in the sky. Thank the Lord. He brought sisters to give us testimony of Almighty God's work. Otherwise, we would have missed our opportunity to be made overcomers before the disaster. Yes, that's right. We'd be caught in the disasters, weeping and gnashing our teeth. That's yes, amen. that's amen. true. Thank the Lord. I must take a look at Almighty God's word and listen to his voice. I must welcome the Lord this way. It's my wish, my wish for years. Oh, Amen. praise God. Thank the Lord. God's work really is wonderful, so full of wisdom. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. First, the Lord returns in the flesh secretly as the Son of Man, speaking the truth and performing his judgment beginning at the house of God, and thus exposes all the Pharisees who hate the truth and pretend to be good. Only those wise virgins with a love of truth can listen to the Lord's voice and be brought before his throne. Those people will be made overcomers before the disaster. God working this way is too wise and practical. Thanks be to God. Amen. Pastor Zuntao, what do you think? Yes, 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 yes. yes. very much. Yes. Their testimony makes a lot of sense. I can't refute it all, especially the words of Almighty God. There's no way to deny them. I can't help but be convinced. If they keep sharing this, it will shame me even further. This book, I can see that it's very valuable. I must take one back with me and use it in my own sermons. Yes, that's what I'll do. Thank the Lord. It's starting to get late. You must be tired from talking to us for this long. You should rest. It's okay. all right. Praise God. I have things to do. I should go. Can I borrow the word appears in the flesh and take a closer look for the next time I talk to you? Uh, go ahead. Pastor, can't you stay longer? Pastor, please. No, hold on. Wait. So, 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 sorry, I going? have to go. Sisters, you just talked about how God uses his word to perform his judgment. The Eastern Lightning is growing too fast. They've stolen over 200 people in less than a month. These are quality preachers with a strong foundation in their faith. What do you think we should do? The Eastern Lightning can't be underestimated. I've just heard that they're expanding to nearby churches. Pastor John, if this keeps up, I'm afraid that we're going to lose our church. If we want to keep our members, I think we can't let them read their books or let them listen to any of their sermons. That's the only way we can get to the root of this. Here, everyone, take a look at this. What we need to do is pass around to all of the believers, all of the CCP's propaganda materials that condemn the Church of Almighty God. If we put this negative material right in their hands, I know our believers will be afraid to make contact with any of them. Also, we all have to spread the word. That is, if anyone from Eastern Lightning tries to steal sheep in a church, then that church must call the police. No, Pastor. I don't agree with this approach. Even all the non-believers are now aware that China, the entire nation as a whole, has the least religious freedom in the world. To keep order and maintain its dark authoritarian regime, the CCP is not above lying or doing anything that's despicable. You know how they persecute Christians. Haven't we endured enough? This is true. Yeah, yes, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So many brothers and sisters have been tortured to death by them. This is true. Yes, this is true. Yes, true. During the Cultural true. Revolution, we were called reactionaries because we believed in the Lord. And they sent us to prison. And that's not all. And while we were both in prison, the CCP tried to make us abandon our beliefs.
by doing everything they could to torture us. Relentlessly. Can't you see that the CCP is Satan's regime? The one that resists God most? It's about it's about it's about it. These materials that condemn the church of Almighty God are clearly malicious rumors. Rumors the CCP just made up. How can we spread something like this? If the Eastern Lightning is the true way, then aren't we helping the CCP in spreading heresy that resists God and condemns his own work? Where would we be? Resisting God ourselves? Helping Satan? Wouldn't this make us accomplices to the CCP? I agree with what Elder Peng's saying. Throughout history, the CCP has always supported evil and opposed God. If we help spread these untrue rumors and heresy, we would be leading our brothers and sisters to obey the regime of Satan. This is relying on Satan. This resists and betrays the Lord. It would certainly be condemned by the Lord. Agreed. Zhang Zhe is right. That's true. And we can't betray the Lord. <sighs> but if we were to back down, wouldn't we be handing this church we worked so hard for over to those Eastern Lightning people? The Eastern Lightning is stealing our brothers and sisters one by one. How could we face the Lord when he returns to take us all? <sighs> My suggestion is for defending the way of our Lord, for protecting our flock. Yes, that's right. No matter what, Pastor Jun is protecting the church. He's asking us to reject them, because the Eastern Lightning is too powerful. If we don't use the CCP's propaganda to help ourselves, then we won't get to keep this church. We can never join hands with the CCP. But think about this. The CCP is now fully persecuting the Church of Almighty God. Many of the believers of this church are now being held in prison. And some have been put to death. If we do call the police and place all of these people in the hands of the CCP, wouldn't we be placing believers in the hands of Satan? Because if we do, it would be a sin. It would resist God. Yes, indeed. It can make us resist God. It would be a great sin and incur God's wrath. Sun Tao, please, we have to be careful lest we offend the Lord. We cannot think about it. What if Eastern Lightning really is the end time work of God? We'd be persecuting God and his believers. We'd be the ones condemned as sinners. Just like how the Pharisees were cursed in their time for their ignorance. Beyond redemption. Calling the police. Brothers and sisters, if we don't do this, then everyone will follow Eastern Lightning. There will be fewer and fewer offerings. Then what will we use to fund our expenditures? Who will we preach to if there's no one else in church? Sun Tao is right. We should go with what Pastor John is proposing. Okay, let's do it. We should do exactly what The Eastern Lightning has stolen so many good sheep. When the Lord returns, how can we give account to him? Why are we not thinking about this? Pastor John, you keep saying that our church will fail and we'll lose our offerings, that no one will listen to your preaching. Tell me exactly what are your intentions. Just who do you think we're really serving? Doesn't this deserve more thought? When the Pharisees preached in the meeting halls, they didn't bear witness to God or exalt him. They never led anyone else to follow God's word. So what did they value? Just their gold, their wealth, their high-ranking positions. Yes, that's right. So Jesus condemned them and said, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! If our work and our preaching doesn't lead anybody to live by God's word and his commandments, if we are just doing this to serve our own status, 
Aren't we on the same path? Aren't we just as ignorant as the Pharisees? Haven't we become Pharisees of modern times? This would be too dangerous. Once we've done many evils, we will be cursed by God. We won't be able to turn back. And we won't even have a chance to repent. Am I not blocking them and taking action to protect all of our believers and save this church? How am I a Pharisee? Say what you want, but I know I worked hard to build this church and no one will take it from me. Do it, that's final. I wonder what's happened to Sister Lou. Sister, Sister Lou, Lou, good morning. Oh, it's you. The pastor said to call the police on anyone from Eastern Lightning. I won't, for Brother Shen, but you two never come back. But Sister, but Sister. Sister. God uses the word to achieve the results of his work. He does not work wonders or... Who is it? Sum Tao, Move. what are you doing? What's going on? What's going on? We're going to post your photo online. The church will know. You won't steal believers Let's again. Let's stop wasting our time. Grab take her. her to the grab her. What she are can't you leave. Grab her. Grab her. Grab her. She can't leave. Grab her. Take Don't her away. Her Don't leave. Just no, go. she can't. Shen, grab her. We can't let her steal from our church again. Grab her! Almighty God, there are many believers out there who fall for the rumors and lies from the pastors and the CCP. They won't make contact with us, and they stay away. Some of the new believers have been weakened and made passive by their pastors and all the tricks they've used. Their religious leaders have even called on the CCP to capture us and persecute us. To spread the gospel in this city is becoming much too difficult. blessings that you were given. Have you ever sought the promises of God that you were made? You will surely with the guidance of his light break through the stranglehold of the forces of darkness. Surely not in the midst of darkness Lose the light guiding you Oh God, please help give us faith and give us power Help us spread your gospel to as many people as we can Amen Thank you for coming. As you may know, Pastor Jung has been sealing off the churches, discouraging others from seeking the true way, and even helping the CCP persecute us. This has not been an easy trial, not for any of us here. What is everyone thinking? How do you really feel? Why don't we open up? We can discuss this heart to heart. I don't understand. Pastor Zhang also listened to your testimony of Almighty God's work in the last days. I know that he thinks Almighty God's word is the truth. But then, why won't he accept it? Why is he spreading these rumors, condemning and resisting God's end-time work, and keeping people from Almighty God? That's right. Pastor Zhang truly knows the Bible. He tells us to be humble, patient, loyal. He's so convincing and he can seem quite godly. Who knew that he would resist God's end time work in such a manner as this? 
You can know a man's exterior, but not his heart. Brothers and sisters, religious leaders trying to condemn the work of Almighty God is not that unusual. Yeah. When Jesus came down to do his work, didn't those religious leaders also try to condemn and persecute him? In the end, they even nailed our Lord Jesus to the cross. That's a historical fact. Almighty God comes in the last days, and the words he utters are the truth, which convinces everyone. Anyone who truly believes in God and hungers for the truth, once reading Almighty God's word, will turn toward Almighty God. But the religious leaders are afraid that if all of their believers turn to Almighty God, there won't be anyone there to listen to their empty biblical theories or their theology. It is a threat to their status and livelihood. That's why they do everything to resist and condemn Almighty God. That's right. Brothers and sisters, let's look at a passage from Almighty God's Word. Okay. okay. Almighty God says, Any who do not understand the purpose of God's work are those who stand against God. And even more so are those who are aware of the purpose of God's work, yet do not seek to satisfy God. Those who read the Bible in grand churches recite the Bible every day, yet not one understands the purpose of God's work. Not one is able to know God. Moreover, not one is in accord with the heart of God. They are all worthless, vile men, each standing on high to teach God. Though they brandish the name of God, they willfully oppose Him. Though they label themselves believers of God, they are ones who eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such men are devils who devour the soul of man, demons who purposefully disturb those who try to step onto the right path, and stumbling blocks that impede the path of those who seek God. Though they are of robust flesh, how are their followers to know that they are antichrists who lead man in opposition to God? How are they to know that they are living devils who specially seek souls to devour. No one believed that those in the religious world would oppose God and His work. But then, the coming of Jesus revealed that there are antichrists in religious circles. It was religious leaders who persecuted and condemned Jesus, up until the very end when they crucified Him. This only proves that religious leaders can still resist God while they're serving Him. You see, most pastors in religious circles, when they try to explain the Bible, will use certain doctrines that celebrate themselves, but in fact, they won't practice the words of Lord Jesus. Especially when Almighty God's work arrives upon them in the last days, then their truth-hating and satanic nature is exposed and they cannot escape it. Right. In order to protect their status and funds, they made up all sorts of rumors to oppose and condemn Almighty God and to control their believers. They've even sealed off their church under the guise of protecting the flock and defending the true way, obstructing people from studying the work of Almighty God. What's even worse, is that they only care about their own reputations and how they can improve them. This is what leads them to cage and control other people. They've tried to steal Almighty God's words and then without shame work them into their own sermons. This only goes to show us that they're working from prideful ambitions to compete with God for status. Pastor Jun is like that. How could he? These pastors and religious leaders are no better than the Pharisees who stopped at nothing to resist Jesus Christ when he was on earth. Yes. They all hate the truth and are antichrists that make God an enemy. That's right. They've become demons who trample upon others and swallow their souls. That's right. 
They have offended God and His disposition, and surely they will receive His righteous punishment. What you've said is right. When Jesus came down to redeem the world, He revealed the hypocritical Pharisees in religious circles at that time. That's right. Now Almighty God has come to do His judgment work, and these Antichrists are once again being exposed. To cage and control the believers, these pastors and religious leaders are doing everything they can to stop us investigating the true way. These people, for anyone trying to enter God's kingdom, are the very stumbling blocks. That's right. That's right. We've sacrificed so much these years. Now we know that all we were doing was feeding these parasites. They really are demons, eating man's flesh, and now they want to devour our souls. He's right. I get angrier the more I think about these pastors. How could they choose to give help to the CCP and fight Almighty God? <sighs> Especially after Pastor John was persecuted in the past. I never thought he could make the decision to work with the CCP and resist Almighty God. How in the world could all these pastors be so treacherous and completely wrong? Weren't it for the words and work of Almighty God, then it would have been hard for us to see who they really are. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Brothers and sisters, every time God becomes flesh, he reveals some antichrist devils in religious circles. When Jesus came down to earth, he exposed the hypocritical Pharisees and all of the evil forces that work through them. Now Almighty God has come. He has exposed the evil forces in religious circles, the Antichrist in the last days. That's right. The appearing and work of God incarnate reveal people so much. A lot of religious leaders did indeed suffer when they faced persecution from the CCP. Some were put in prison for 10 to 20 years. Even worse, some were separated from their families, their lives destroyed. And yet somehow, they still don't see the true face of the CCP devils. When Almighty God expresses the truth and performs judgment in the last days, sadly, they even side with the CCP to furiously condemn Almighty God, crucifying God once again. This is because of their satanic nature, which hates the truth and is the enmity to God. Horrible, yeah. It shows the religious world is like the demonic regime. They all belong in Satan's camp. They are all satanic evil forces hard at work to condemn and resist God. Let's read another passage of Almighty God's Word. Okay. okay. Turn to page 894. I can read it. Okay. Almighty God says, How many seek the truth and follow righteousness? They are all beasts, like pigs and dogs, leading a gang of stink flies in a dung heap to wag their heads and incite disorder. They believe that their king of hell is the most superior of kings, without realizing that they are nothing more than flies on rot. With green wings upon their backs, this refers to their claiming to believe in God. They begin to become conceited, and boast everywhere of their own beauty and attractiveness, secretly casting away their impurities onto man. And they are even smug, as if a pair of rainbow-colored wings could conceal their own impurities, and thus they persecute the existence of the true God. This refers to the inside story of the religious world. Little does man know that, though the wings of the fly are beautiful and enchanting, it is, after all, no more than a minuscule fly that is full of filth and covered with germs. On the strength of their pigs and dogs of parents, they run amuck across the land. This refers to the religious officials who persecute God on the basis of strong support from the country, betraying the true God and the truth with overwhelming ferocity. It is as if the ghosts of the Jewish Pharisees have returned along with God to the nation of the great red dragon, back to their old nest. They have again begun their work of persecution continuing their work spanning several thousand years.
This group of degenerates is sure to perish on earth in the end. It appears that after several millennia, the unclean spirits have become even more crafty and sly. They constantly think of ways to secretly undermine the work of God. They are wily and cunning and wish to replay in their homeland the tragedy of several thousand years ago. This almost goads God into giving out a loud cry, and he can hardly keep himself from returning to the third heaven to annihilate them. You see, ever since Almighty God began to do the judgment, religious leaders have been resisting his work. They've chosen to become allies with the CCP and relied on their evil forces. On the one hand, they've tried to control the believers in the religious circles. They've blocked them off from seeking and exploring the work of Almighty God. On the other hand, they've become spies for the CCP, watching God's people, providing more information for them to arrest us. They're forming a united front along with the CCP in an attempt to abolish God's work in the last days. That's awful. These facts are enough to prove that most religious leaders also have truth-hating, satanic nature like the CCP devils. They are demons in the flesh and enemies of God. That's right. Almighty God's words are absolutely correct. These current religious leaders are just the Pharisees of today. But their resistances to God have even gone much farther beyond the actions of the Pharisees from back then. Their condemnation of the work of Almighty God is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. They're crucifying Christ of the last days all over again. Mm, that's right. This shows that religious leaders are all antichrists exposed by God's work in the last days. We know this is true, a fact that no one can deny. Praise Almighty God. He has parted the clouds for me. It's so true that his work can reveal people. It's shown us the true colors of religious pastors resisting God. Yes. Otherwise, we would have continued to be deceived by these Pharisees and then be devoured by them. Thank Almighty God for rescuing us from the wicked grasp of these demons. Praise, Praise to God. God. Now I can see that this is the great salvation. Amen. Amen. Be to God. This blasphemy of Almighty God's work by the religious leaders offends God's righteous disposition, and they will surely face God's punishment. Praise to God. Today's fellowship was truly guided by God. It helped me understand His will. The more our leaders try to resist and condemn Almighty God, then that means we have to follow Him even more. Amen. That's right. And we have to bring others who sincerely believe in the Lord to the presence of God. Praise God. Wonderful. We have to help them escape such deception and control so that they can receive the provision of Almighty God's words, and then they can accept God's salvation. Amen. Praise God. Oh, praise God. Now, everyone, we should use this time to pray together. Okay. 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 Hey, you! Are you from around here? Have you seen this person? We should go see Sister Chow. Okay. Yes, we've been looking everywhere for them. Yes, I know what to do. Okay. It's Jinji. Come in quickly. Yesterday, Sun Tao brought the police and searched the meeting place. They're looking everywhere to arrest you. Get inside, quickly. It's true that wherever God works, Satan will try to ruin it. Go on, okay. sit down okay. quickly. Brother Lin, Sister Lin, how come I haven't seen you at the last few meetings? Have you had any problems? <sighs> Pastor Jung took the police to our house. He read us papers about the CCP cracking down on the Church of Almighty God, and also gave us some negative propaganda. 
The fact that the CCP has been opposing so hard only tells me that this is the true way. The CCP is an atheist party, a satanic regime that hates truth and resists God most. They label all churches of the true God as just evil cults. This is a fact known to all. That's right. But then, it's really too difficult to believe. Under the CCP, following God has become a very real danger for us. The CCP is too evil. You're right. Under the rule of the CCP, people can be arrested, persecuted, even killed for accepting the true way. I don't understand. Why is the CCP afraid of Almighty God's work? Brother Lin, Sister Lin, everything you've said is true. The CCP has gone through the country to try every way to suppress the Church of Almighty God, hunting Christ and capturing all of God's chosen people. To believe in the true God and fulfill duty in this country does indeed carry great danger. But people in religion and those unbelievers don't understand. Why do we still believe in Almighty God when the government persecutes us like this? It's because we know Almighty God is the true God, the return of the Redeemer. Only Almighty God is capable enough to save us from Satan, free us from sin, and grant us a good destination. Mm -hmm. Yes. And in the final age, Man's belief in Almighty God will be what determines their fate. The Bible says, The whole world lies in wickedness. This means Satan rules the world, and it controls mankind. All of them live under Satan's domain. They're truly corrupt with no human likeness. In the last days, Almighty God comes to save mankind from Satan's influence so that they can return to God's presence, achieve salvation, live out a real life, and receive a good destination. Yes. That is what our faith in Almighty God means. That's right. Also, we have to understand why the CCP hates Almighty God and why it tries to persecute the church. What is its purpose? Why does it do that? I don't know. Lots of people can see it clearly. The CCP is doing everything it can to frame and condemn the Church of Almighty God, arresting many of God's chosen people and taking God out of China, all just so it can preserve its dark regime and forever control Chinese people, abusing the great power that it holds over their heads. In the end, it'll torment us to death and send us all to the fires of hell. Yeah. The CCP is the most God-hating, truth-hating regime that has ever been seen. That's because it knows that Almighty God is the only one who can express the truth, that He is currently performing His judgment, cleansing, and salvation work of the last days. Almighty God's Word is already on the Internet, where it can be found and read by all mankind. The CCP is getting scared because it's aware that once Almighty God's Word spreads among people, anyone who sincerely loves truth and justice will turn to Almighty God. Then its demonic nature that hates truth and resists God will finally be exposed to all. And all of humanity will strike it down, reject it, trample it beneath their feet, and then leave it to rot. It will never have a place in China again and it will never again try to corrupt the people in this world. That's why it has such hatred for the truth that is expressed by Almighty God and the Church of Almighty God. It does everything to stop people from accepting Almighty God. The CCP is too evil. Brothers and sisters, if we can't see through Satan's manipulations and continue to let ourselves be deceived, or worse, controlled, then we're much too foolish for salvation. Now I understand that the CCP's vicious persecution of us is just because it doesn't want us to follow and obey the true God, gain the truth, 
turn to God and enter the kingdom of heaven. Yes. yes. Instead, it victimizes us and tries to drag us to hell. So, if we want to gain the truth and God's salvation, then we can't let the CCP control us. Cowardly people can't enter God's kingdom. Sister, we can't let ourselves be weak any longer. People who become passive are useless. It makes us ignorant, shameful, disloyal, unworthy to be called human. That's right. Being passive can sadden God and truly delight Satan. Yeah. It's all part of Satan's scheme. That's right. Mm -hmm. We should take a stand and follow God and curse the devil, the CCP. That's, That's right. right. Well said. We should strive harder to pursue the truth, fulfill our duty to strike back at Satan and put it to shame. That's what an intelligent person would do. Yeah. That's true. The more they attack, the harder we should work. We must bear witness to God. We can't be spineless. Yes. That's, That's right. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meng En, after what you've said, I really feel ashamed. I have become spineless, unworthy of believing in God. <sighs> Listening to your words has really renewed my spirit. This time, I won't be afraid. I'll follow Almighty God even if it costs me my life. Amen. 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 I used to think that the CCP had its days numbered and it would soon collapse. So I thought it would be better for me if I waited until then to believe. But now I see that the CCP's true purpose is to make us all be sent to hell. That's right. Oh, sister, I have another question. If we wait until the CCP is gone before we follow Almighty God, will we still receive God's final salvation and enter his kingdom? Or will we miss out on our chance at salvation? Sister Lin, don't be ashamed. That's a great question. Today, because we believe in God, seek the truth, and try to walk the right path, we face the CCP's oppression and persecution. This really means a lot. Yeah. That's because God is using the satanic regime as a means to perfect his overcomers, while still revealing and eliminating those who don't really believe in God or love the truth. The true overcomers are those who under the authoritarian regime can experience God's words with the truest kind of faith. Through experiencing the CCP's persecution and oppression, they thoroughly see through the true colors of the devil Satan. And then they can hate Satan, forsake Satan, and truly return to God, achieving salvation and perfection. Yes. Overcomers are produced in a special environment made by the CCP's persecution of God's chosen people. Without this environment made by such oppression, true overcomers can't be created. That's right. Those who sincerely want God, no matter how much they're persecuted or how hard it might get, will still follow God and perform their duty, risk everything to pursue the truth, and their faith in God grows more and more. They see through the CCP's crackdown of justice, support of evil, its lawlessness, and its evil, reactionary basic nature. They see that the CCP is devil, who seeks to corrupt, spread affliction, and devour mankind. They'll hate the CCP even more, so they'll forsake it and give their faith to God. That's, That's right. right. Through the contrast brought out by the CCP, people have come to know God's righteousness and holiness, as well as his beauty. All God provides is his love and his salvation for mankind, the faith that people have in God becomes greater. Their love for God grows. Their hearts become closer to God. These people have broken straight through the CCP's dark influence and have an overcoming testimony. They are the overcomers made by God in the Great Tribulation, and they're also the group that has inherited a part of Christ's Tribulation Kingdom and Patience. They are Christ's true witnesses. The 144,000 overcomers mentioned in Revelation who will enter God's kingdom and receive eternal life. Praise Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. That's, right. That's, right. That's, right. That's why our experience with persecution over our pursuit of the truth is so meaningful. As the Lord has said, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, 
for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's see what Almighty God says. Let's turn to page 682. I can read it. Okay. Almighty God says, Perhaps you all remember these words. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In the past, you have all heard this saying, yet none understood the true meaning of the words. Today, you know well the real significance they hold. These words are what God will accomplish in the last days, and they will be accomplished upon those cruelly afflicted by the great red dragon in the land where it lies. The great red dragon persecutes God and is the enemy of God. So in this land, those who believe in God are subjected to humiliation and persecution. That is why these words will become reality in you group of people. Thanks Amen. Be to God. Be to Amen. God. Amen. You see, now is the ideal time for God to perfect his overcomers. When the CCP collapses, these overcomers can then rise up and bear witness to God's victory. When their witness to God reaches the peak, the kingdom of God will finally be realized on earth. Oh yes, we must take advantage of this opportunity. By then, God's work of saving mankind will be completed. Those who will be saved or be perfected will already be set. But if we wait till then to believe, we'll miss out on the chance to be transformed into overcomers by God. Then we won't have the overcoming testimony and can't enter God's kingdom. Even if we survive, we'll be called a service doer and we won't be a member of God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Thanks, be, Thanks to God. be to God. God can use the CCP's persecution to make overcomers. We're so blessed to have this rare opportunity in this dark time. Amen. Amen. Yes. Sister Lynn, we can't allow cowardice to make us miss the chance to become overcomers. We must speed up our efforts. Believing sooner is much better and more meaningful. That's right. As long as you sincerely believe, you'll never regret following Almighty God, no matter what. You might even think you waited too long. That's right. That's right. That's right. The point of Almighty God's judgment is to perfect man. Almighty God can bless man with eternal life. If we had believed a few years earlier, we might have already gained the truth in life. We have to stop wasting our yes. lives. Yes, so yes right. you're right. Absolutely. Yes, of course. That's right. God is almighty. God's wisdom is always exercised based on Satan's schemes. Almighty God's work in the last days is unstoppable against any hostile force. Amen. Amen. Since Almighty God began His work of the last days, He has always faced endless hate and opposition from the religious world and CCP. But now, God's kingdom gospel has still been spread throughout mainland China, reaching a level unprecedented. Praise, Praise God. God. That's Praise wonderful. God. So wonderful. Praise God. With tens of thousands of churches being built all over the country, millions of people having returned to Almighty God. That's right. He has gained a group of people who are of the same mind with Him. Amen. Amen. That's, That's great. great. And now the website of the Church of Almighty God has been opened to various nations all around the world. And Almighty God's Word is being accepted by more and more. The expanding of the Kingdom Gospel reveals God's almightiness and the depth of His great wisdom. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's look at two passages of Almighty sure, God's Word. Sure, sure. sure. Let's turn to page 17. Almighty God says, Today, God has returned to the world to do His work. His first stop is the grand assemblage of dictatorial rulers, China, the staunch bastion of atheism. God has gained a group of people by his wisdom and power. During the period 
He is hunted by China's ruling party in every means and subjected to great suffering. With no place to rest his head and unable to find a shelter. Despite this, God still continues the work He intends to do. He utters His voice and spreads the gospel. None can fathom the almightiness of God. In China, a country that regards God as an enemy, God has never ceased His work. Instead, more people have accepted His work and word. For God does all He can to save each and every member of mankind. We trust that no country or power can stand in the way of what God wishes to achieve. Those that obstruct God's work resist the word of God, disturb and impair the plan of God, shall ultimately be punished by God. The kingdom is expanding in humanity's midst. It is forming in humanity's midst. It is standing up in humanity's midst. There is no force that can destroy my kingdom. I am now walking abroad in the midst of my people. I live in the midst of my people. Today, those who bear genuine love toward me, people like these, are blessed. Blessed are those who submit to me. They will surely stay in my kingdom. Blessed are those who know me. They will surely wield power in my kingdom. Blessed are those who seek after me. They will surely escape from Satan's bonds and enjoy blessing in me. Blessed are those who are able to forsake themselves. They will surely enter into my possession and inherit my kingdom's bounty. Those who run around for my sake, I will commemorate. Those who go to expense for my sake, I will joyfully embrace. Those who make offering to me, I will give enjoyments. Those who find enjoyment in my words, I will bless. They will surely be the pillars that hold up the ridgepole in my kingdom. They will surely have matchless bounty in my house, and no one can compare with them. Have you ever accepted the blessings that you were given? Have you ever sought the promises that you were made? You will surely, under the guidance of my light, break through the stranglehold of the forces of darkness. You will surely not, in the midst of darkness, lose the light guiding you. You will surely be the master of all creation. You will surely be an overcomer before Satan. You will surely, at the downfall of the kingdom of the great red dragon, stand up amid the myriad throngs to bear witness to my victory. You will surely be resolute and unwavering in the land of Sinem. Through the sufferings you endure, you will inherit the blessing that comes from me and will surely irradiate all within the universe with my glory. Amen. Amen. You're right. God truly is almighty. And now I no longer fear the CCP. Though it's vicious and savage, it's still beneath the feet of God. Amen. Therefore, we can't let their dark influence overwhelm us. That's right. That's right. The more they persecute us, the more we'll believe in almighty God. Even if they choose to execute us, Make us martyrs. We'll be doing something meaningful and approving to God. Amen. That's better than seeking an easy life. Being worthless and ending up cursed by God. That's right. Common people have trouble understanding this. It's just like what Jesus said. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. 
That's right. right. The Lord Jesus also said, For whoever will save his life shall lose it, and whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. If we want to gain life, then we have to be willing to give our lives. That's right. Only by believing in Almighty God can we gain eternal life and enter God's kingdom. I have so much confidence. All I risk losing is my lowly life on earth. But in exchange, I'd get eternal life. And wouldn't that be worth it? Yes. It won't matter if we suffer for our faith in Almighty God. It's worthwhile, and it means a lot. Amen. Amen. That's great. We really have to pursue properly. We can't miss out on this opportunity. Brothers and sisters, let's wrap up our meeting for today. Okay. Sister Zhang, Sister Yang, after you two had that conversation with Elder Peng, he read God's words for himself, and now he's convinced that the word of Almighty God is truly God's oh, voice. Praise God. Praise God. He gave us an invitation to come to their meeting place and talk to them about Almighty God's work in the last days. Thank you. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. I invited you all here today so we can talk about Almighty God's work in the last days together. Yes. Now everyone knows that the Church of Almighty God is currently the only church that has openly claimed that Almighty God is the second coming of so Jesus. Jesus really has returned? I've been looking forward to this day for so he long. He has started his judgment, beginning with the house of God, bringing the gospel on the descent of God's Amen. kingdom. Now we have to seek it out. Members of the Church of Almighty God shared with me God's kingdom gospel in the last days. Almighty God's word is indeed the truth. It's the real voice of God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Brothers and sisters, if we don't seek or learn about the Lord's reappearance and work, and merely wait for his open descent with the clouds, we will be eliminated just like the foolish virgins, weeping and wailing from torment in the dark. God's work in the last days will not take long, and it will soon be followed by disaster. That's why we have to learn about God's work in the last days. It's our duty, and we're running out of time. Today, I wanted to reach out and invite Sister Zheng and Sister Young How are Hello. You? to share their testimony of God's work in the last days so we can understand that Almighty God is the second coming of the Lord Jesus and we can welcome his return. Please welcome them. Please sit. Elder Pang, you said that the people from this church claim that the Lord has returned and is carrying out his judgment for the last days. Well, I don't think that's true. Listen, everyone. If the Lord has really returned for his work, then he should be out there preaching openly and in many places with a large following, grand and wondrous. It would spark an uproar in China and people around the world would know. But no, we haven't seen the slightest clue of any of that. How could that be the work of God? Yes, I think Diao makes a very good point. If the Lord had come back, then everyone would see it. We can't accept it if we don't see it. The Lord's return is important, so we need to be cautious. But that's why we have to learn about it. Brothers and sisters, when it comes to the return of the Lord, many people assume that the Lord returning to do His work should cause some kind of commotion. Even if they don't think the Lord is going to descend from the clouds for everyone to see, they think that He should at least perform miracles like Jesus did when preaching, with thousands following him, grand and wondrous, shaking the entire country and the whole world. That's what they think God's work should be like. If it wasn't so, then no one would believe and admit it to be God's own work. But these ideas are actually just things we've imagined about the Lord's return. But if so many people feel this way, how could it be wrong? But everyone tends to overlook the words that Jesus Christ had actually said. Be you, therefore, ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keeps his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. 
We all tend to think that however Jesus did his work, whatever miracles he performed, however he shook the entire Judea, and was then nailed to the cross, he would do it the same way when he comes back in the last days. This is what everyone thinks of God's work, but no one recognizes that God never does the same thing twice. God, wise and almighty, always does something new. That's right. You see, that's why people are always looking for signs when it comes to the Lord and His return, or are gauging the extent of the commotion to determine whether or not it's the Lord's return. But no one puts any focus on listening to the voice of God, on where the Holy Spirit speaks or where there is the truth expressed. None of us would think that God would come down in the flesh quietly like a thief to meet with us and speak the truth, that He would perform His judgment beginning with the house of God and take back His most precious treasures. That is, wise virgins will be brought before Him who follow as soon as they hear the truth and recognize God's voice. They will be judged and receive the cleansing through God's word. And then they will be made overcomers, namely the first fruits. By the time people realize this, God will have already made them the overcomers. Once God's work in his secret descent is completed, it will be time for him to leave the earth and return to Zion. By this time, what man will see won't be God descending with clouds. They'll see disaster raining down. Yes. Those in religious groups who have chosen to look for signs and wait for the Lord to descend from the clouds are the same as Thomas, a man who wouldn't believe in God's miracles unless he saw them with his own eyes. These people will end up abandoned by God, left weeping and wailing in the disasters. Those who listen and try to pay attention to God's voice figure out a fact that whoever can speak the truth Utter the voice of God is Christ of the last days, the reappearance of God and the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. They won't care whether the commotion of God's work is big or small, and they'll care less about any miracles. These people have the highest intelligence. They belong with wise virgins who will be brought before God's throne and then feast with the Lord. Yes, we should be wise virgins. Yes. This fulfills the prophecy in Revelation. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. These people are the kind of treasures God has chosen to steal from various denominations. They will be made overcomers before the disaster. The way of God's reappearing is so wise and it reveals people so much. Man proposes, but God disposes. That's right. Yeah, what they fellowship so conforms with the Bible. Yes. What they've said matches what's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, God's work is truly incredible. Sometimes it shakes the world, sometimes it stays quiet, sometimes it's public, sometimes it's not. Besides, God will always do something new, and He will never repeat His own work. He shows us all that He's omniscient and omnipotent. Right. When God does His work in the last days, He arrives in secret to perform His judgment, beginning at the house of God. There isn't any commotion on the surface. But God has already made the overcomers long before the disaster. God has already achieved victory over Satan and received glory in the East for it. However, a lot of people think they need to see a big commotion for it to be God's work. Without a big commotion, how can it actually be God's work? Jesus, back when he first appeared on the earth, performed many major miracles, causing a stir throughout all of Judea. In that case, why didn't people recognize it was the work of God? And why did few recognize that Lord Jesus was Christ? I have never, never thought, thought about, about this, this before. before. Tell me, what kind of commotion do you want to see? Almighty God came down to China to speak the truth to His people. His work shook everyone. Millions of people who believe in God and long for the truth have accepted the work of Almighty God in the last days, causing a sensation throughout China. Almighty God is a household name known by everyone in China. That's right. 
and his name is spreading to other countries all over the world. The expansion of the Church of Almighty God has been amazing. But to protect their positions, there have been various pastors and religious leaders who have wildly spread rumors and told lies, slandering and blaspheming Almighty God and his church. This has caused a huge stir across the religious world. Have people not noticed this massive commotion? That's right. The CCP is turning the entire country against us in order to cut off the growth of the Church of Almighty God. Resisting God and abolishing the work He's done, making it their top priority. And the Central Committee has had many secret meetings discussing how to abolish Almighty God's work in the last days and then sweep up God's chosen people to achieve its goal of turning all of China into an atheist state. The CCP is sparing no expense in mobilizing the media and telling lies to discredit and condemn our church. Unleashing the military and cops to suppress the Church of Almighty God. They hunt Christ and arrest believers while conducting a full-scale sweep. They place cameras throughout every street and dispatch police. It's cast a dark shadow over the country, inciting panic. Everything they say yeah. is true. They've even bribed the international mainstream media to make up rumors and smear the Church of Almighty God, creating chaos for the world. This is just like how Jesus was opposed and persecuted by the Roman government and the Pharisees when he was on earth. Yes. It shook the entire country and even disrupted the whole of the world. Yes. Tell me, does this commotion count as small? How can people still not see that this is the fact? That's right. The CCP's actions, their persecution, they sparked a kind of uproar. Exactly. The commotion brought by Almighty God's work isn't really that small. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. yes. You are absolutely right. That's right. Any person who's a believer in God and sees the CCP resisting God to such an extent can see that this doesn't just happen by random chance. Only the reappearance of the Lord can incite such frantic condemnation and hatred from such a relentless atheist regime. Yes. The whole world is watching for the Lord to return, so we all need to be as alert as we can possibly be. We should seek out and learn more about His work. Otherwise, if we all miss out on the opportunity to be perfected into God's overcomers, then His salvation will already be over by the time that He openly appears to mankind. Right. God will send down disasters to punish evil. The scene will be awful. Heaven and earth will shake and nations will crumble. But mankind will have lost their final chance at salvation and will only be able to weep in their despair. That's right. right. We can't be foolish virgins. That's right. Don't miss out on the opportunity. Therefore, people need to put aside their old ideas and study the work of Almighty God. That's the wisest thing they could do. That's right. That's right. That's right. It certainly is. And now I understand it. The most important thing in seeking God's work is to find the truth so we can hear His voice. That's because Christ is the only one who holds the truth. Wherever we find the truth, God will be there as well. Seeking the true way like this is what a wise virgin would do. Thanks be to God. Thank the Lord. Gaining such insights today has truly been a blessing. Praise God. Thank Praise God. God. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks Thank the, the Lord. Lord. Yes, it's true. The work of God is so wonderful. The word of God might not cause much commotion, but then the power of his words can change everything. Isn't that the power of God at work? The Bible says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Almighty God is the word becoming flesh. His expressing the word is the word appearing in the flesh. And this is the greatest thing God does in the world. Some people will be blind to it. They won't comprehend what they see and not what they hear either. Doesn't this mean their hearts are calloused? Both times God became flesh, he made it clear that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. So now when we examine God's work, the priority should be to find where the way, the truth, and the life appear and identify the voice of God. We can see that all the truths expressed by Almighty God are the true light appearing to man, 
lighting up all those who love the truth and long for God's return. Many people all accept the true light and follow the true light. Doesn't this represent God's reappearance and work? Though it might seem unremarkable on the surface, Almighty God's Word can shake both heaven and earth and overturn the whole dark world. Isn't the Word appearing in the flesh the biggest commotion God has made? But the blind simply will not see it. An earthquake can cause a scene, but can it substitute for God's work? Man can be so foolish. Those who truly believe in Lord are searching for God's reappearance, and they're looking for the footprints of God's work. Yes. If we're searching for God's appearance, then we should search for God's voice and the Holy Spirit's words to churches. Let me read a passage of God's word. Okay. Almighty God says, Since we are searching for the footprints of God, we must search for God's will, for the words of God, for the utterances of God. For where there are the new words of God, there is the voice of God. And where there are the footsteps of God, there are the deeds of God. Where there is the expression of God, there is the appearance of God. And where there is the appearance of God, there exists the truth, the way, and the life. Almighty God's words Where there are so new wonderful. words from God, then there certainly is the appearance and work of God. Almighty God has expressed all the truths for the salvation of mankind. All we have to do is read Almighty God's word, and then we can see that all the truths expressed by God are the voice of God. They're the way of eternal life bestowed on man by God. Almighty God is God appearing in the flesh, the second coming of Jesus. And from the foundation laid by Jesus' redemption, Almighty God has performed His work of judgment, beginning with the house of God. It's a key part of God's plan to save mankind from the control of Satan and grant them His salvation. It's also the last stage in God's management, which will mark the ending of the age. Therefore, if people are sure that the words spoken by Almighty God are the truth and the voice of God, they should quickly accept it and obey God's work of the last days. Only thus can they be saved and enter God's kingdom. That's right. So now, if someone has a question, feel free to ask. Almighty God's Word can resolve all of our most difficult problems. God's Word can make us enlightened at once and feast our eyes. That's right. You know, we haven't heard such fellowship for a very long time. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I'd like to ask a question. Sure. Many brothers and sisters believe that our faith in Jesus means our sins are forgiven and that we've enjoyed much of the Lord's grace and we've experienced His compassion and mercy. Jesus Christ doesn't see us as sinners, so we should all be raptured directly into God's kingdom. Yes, yes. yes. well said. Well said. Yes. well said. Then why didn't the Lord take us to His kingdom at His return? And why does He still have to pass judgment in the last days? Is God's judgment to cleanse and save the whole of mankind? Or kill, condemn us to death? Many people just don't seem to understand this. So, sisters, could you please tell us more about this? Sure. Hold on. You were saying that the Lord has come to perform His judgment of the last days. But then, Jesus once made this promise to us. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. The Lord will return and take us directly to the kingdom of heaven. If He will, how could He judge us? Praise the Lord. Our sins have been forgiven because we believe. We're saved by the Lord's grace. So we can't be judged when He returns. So the Lord returns we will be judged. There will be no Sister Diao, Sister Lai, our sins may have been forgiven, but we still can't deny that we commit sins during the day and confess those sins at night. We're still far from being cleansed and far from obeying God and following God's way. The Bible says, You shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. God is holy and righteous. We're so filthy and corrupt. How can we go to the kingdom of heaven? 
Now, we have this great opportunity to seek the truth. Let's ask these sisters from the Church of Almighty God to fellowship this aspect of the truth with us. Sure. Elder Peng, the question you asked was very realistic. Even though the Lord has forgiven our sins and thus were redeemed, but from God's point of view, man is still filthy and corrupt and has too much sin and hasn't been cleansed. Being forgiven means we won't be condemned by the law, and that is what saved by grace really means. Yeah. God may have forgiven us for our sins and bestowed much grace upon us, letting us enjoy a certain peace and happiness, and giving us the right to pray and communicate with God. But what can't be denied is that we still sin against God quite often, and we haven't reached holiness. We still need God to return to us all in the last days to cleanse and save us thoroughly. So you see, the work of Jesus' redemption was just to pave the way for God's judgment in the last days. God's plan to save mankind doesn't actually end there. It would help if everybody knew this. Yes. Earlier you all asked us, how come after man has been forgiven, he still can't help himself when he commits sin so often and can't seem to stop living in such sin. Yes, it's a question that's puzzled us for a long time. It's all because we are corrupted by Satan just far too deep to a point where we're all satanic by nature with satanic disposition. That's why mankind can't help but keep committing so many sins. Yes. If their satanic nature never gets resolved, Mankind is still capable of sin, even if they've all been forgiven. And then, mankind won't be able to achieve compatibility with God. This is why Jesus Christ said He'd return. It's so He can cleanse us with His judgment in the last days and save all of mankind. Just as Almighty God says, Before man was redeemed, Many of Satan's poisons were already planted within him. After thousands of years of Satan's corruption, man already has within him a nature that resists God. Therefore, when man has been redeemed, it is nothing more than redemption. Where man is bought at a high price, but the poisonous nature within has not been eliminated. Man that is so defiled must undergo a change before being worthy to serve God. Through this work of judgment and chastisement, man will fully come to know the filthy and corrupt substance within him, and he will be able to completely change and become clean. Only in this way can man be worthy to return before the throne of God. All the work done this day is so that man can be made clean and be changed. Through judgment and chastisement by the word, as well as refinement, man can cast away his corruption and be made pure. Rather than deeming this stage of work to be that of salvation, it would be more apt to say it is the work of purification. In truth, this stage is that of conquest, as well as the second stage of salvation. Man is gained by God through judgment and chastisement by the Word. Through the use of the Word to refine, judge, and disclose all of the impurities, notions, motives, and individual hopes within man's heart are completely revealed. I'll read more of God's word. Almighty God says, the sins of man could be forgiven through the sin offering, but man has been unable to resolve the issue of just how he can no longer sin and how his sinful nature can be cast away completely and be transformed. The sins of man were forgiven because of the work of God's crucifixion. But man 
continue to live in the old, corrupt, satanic disposition. As such, man must be completely saved from the corrupt, satanic disposition, so that the sinful nature of man is completely cast away and never again develops, thus allowing the disposition of man to be changed. This requires man to understand the path of growth in life. The way of life and the way to change his disposition. It also needs man to act in accordance with this path so that the disposition of man can gradually be changed and he can live under the shining of the light and that he can do all things in accord with the will of God. Cast away the corrupt satanic disposition and break free from Satan's influence of darkness, thereby emerging fully from sin. Only then will man receive complete salvation. Yes, that's true. Therefore, after that stage was complete, there is still the work of judgment and chastisement. This stage makes man pure through the word so as to give man a path to follow. This stage is more meaningful than the previous one, and more fruitful as well. For now, it is the word that directly supplies life for man and enables the disposition of man to be completely renewed. It is a stage of work more thorough. Almighty God's words couldn't be more clear. In the age of grace, Jesus only did his redemptive work. Mankind's sins were forgiven for their belief, and yet still their sinful nature has not been resolved. Mankind's sinful nature is Satan's nature. It has already taken root deep inside men's hearts and has become their lives. That is why man still can't help but give in to sin and try to resist God. Man's satanic nature is the reason behind his resistance to God. Mankind's sins can be forgiven, but can God forgive his satanic nature too? We're not We're sure. sure. We're not sure. We're not sure. We're not Our satanic nature directly opposes God and is in direct enmity to the truth. God would never forgive it. Therefore, for God to completely save mankind from the bondage of their satanic nature, he must judge and chastise all of mankind. God's judgment in the last days is targeted at man's satanic nature and disposition. They're still deep inside the hearts of mankind. Now knowing that, you might wonder, can that satanic nature only be removed from us through judgment and chastisement? Can't we, through suffering, subduing our bodies, and restraining ourselves, resolve this satanic nature ourselves? Definitely not. Look at the many saints throughout all of history who paid the price through suffering and restraint, who all wanted to escape the bondage of their sin and transcend their own flesh. How many of them could defeat Satan and become truly obedient to God? Almost none. Even if they did, they were people who were especially perfected by God. But just how many people did this? This was because there was no judgment from God, so that sinful nature was never able to be cleansed. So man's disposition was unable to be really changed. This one fact sufficiently proves that using human means will not help us resolve our satanic nature. Yes. Man must ultimately go through God's judgment, chastisement, trials, and some refinement before they gain the truth and finally receive the way of eternal life. This is the only way that we can resolve man's satanic nature. That's why, based on the groundwork of Jesus Christ's redemption of mankind, 
Almighty God carries out His judgment in the last days to free man from the grip and control of his satanic nature so that mankind can be cleansed and can receive God's salvation and be gained by God. From this we can understand that it's God's judgment in the last days that can thoroughly cleanse mankind and save all of mankind. We know this is the truth. Yes. Oh, such fellowship is so clear. Thank the Lord. For all these years, we've confessed our sins and repented, and tried to restrain ourselves from sinning and displeasing the Lord. But then, I don't know why we've always failed. And now, after listening to what you've said, I finally understand. The redemptive work of our Lord Jesus Christ was to forgive man for his sins, but not to forgive man's sinful nature. Man will sin because he has this nature. If this satanic nature isn't resolved, then man will naturally resist God. It seems that for man to get rid of this nature, be saved by God and enter his kingdom, he must accept God's work of judgment and chastisement in the last days. Yes, yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. My sisters, what you fellowshiped with us today has been very constructive for us. Sisters, what you've shared with us today makes a lot of sense, but still, we think of the Lord as merciful and loving. We think the Lord will forgive all our sins, and His grace is enough for us to enjoy. I don't think we need the Lord's return to execute His judgment. Yes, I agree with that too. If we still have to face judgment when the Lord returns, doesn't that mean we'll be condemned? Will His grace still actually be grace? The Lord is loving and merciful. His return won't be to judge His followers. Sisters, yes, our sins have been forgiven by the Lord, and we've also enjoyed much of His grace. But does any of that mean we have no sin? Does it prove that man is qualified to enter God's kingdom? The Lord is holy. How could he allow those who sin often and resist him to enter the kingdom of heaven? Now come on, when the Lord returns and passes judgment to cleanse man, are you not going to accept it? Limiting God and trying to judge God's work is offending God's disposition and resisting him. The Lord is already inspecting us. You're right, we can't draw conclusions like this. Brothers and sisters, we're all much more aware that God's final judgment is mankind's greatest chance at salvation. If man doesn't experience God's judgment, then man's satanic nature will never really be resolved, and mankind won't be able to turn to God and be gained by Him. And then mankind won't be able to enjoy God's promise or receive a good destination a fact that not one believer can deny. But now, many people don't understand what is the meaning behind God's judgment and chastisement. Is God's judgment actually condemning mankind or saving us all? This requires us to know God's work of saving mankind. That way, we can understand God's intentions. Let's read a few passages from God's Word. Almighty God says, How does God make people perfect through His righteous disposition? Above all, God's disposition is one of righteousness, wrath, majesty, judgment, and curse. He primarily makes people perfect through judgment. Some people don't understand and they ask why it is only through judgment and curses that He makes people perfect. They say that if God cursed someone, wouldn't that person die? If He judged someone, wouldn't they be condemned? And so, how could He still make them perfect? Such are the words of those who do not know God's work. God curses people's disobedience and judges their sins. And although His words are stern and devoid of any emotion, they reveal all that is within people. These stern words also reveal people's essence. 
Through this means of judgment, God gives people a profound knowledge of the essence of their flesh, and thus they are obedient before God. All of you live in a place of sin and licentiousness. You are all licentious and sinful people. Today, you not only can see God, but more importantly, you have received chastisement and judgment, received such deepest salvation, that is, received God's greatest love. All that He does is true love for you. He has no ill intention. It is because of your sins that He judges you, so that you will examine yourselves and receive this tremendous salvation. All this is done to work man. From beginning to end, God has been doing His utmost to save man and he is certainly not willing to completely destroy the men he created with his own hands. Now he has come among you to work. Isn't this even more salvation? If he hated you, would he still do work of such magnitude to personally lead you? Why should he suffer so? God does not hate you or have any ill intention toward you. You should know that God's love is the truest love. It is only because of people's disobedience that He has to save them through judgment. Otherwise, they would not be saved. Allow me to read a passage. Almighty God says, in His final work of concluding the age, God's disposition is one of chastisement and judgment, which reveals all that is unrighteous, and publicly judges all peoples, and perfects those who truly love Him. Only a disposition such as this can bring the age to an end. The last days have already arrived, all things will be classed according to kind and will be divided into different categories based on their nature. This is the time in which God reveals the end and the destination of man. If man does not undergo chastisement and judgment, then there will be no way of revealing the disobedience and unrighteousness of man. Only through chastisement and judgment can the end of all things be revealed. Man only shows his true colors when he is chastised and judged. Evil shall return to evil, good shall return to good, and man shall be classified according to kind. Through chastisement and judgment, the end of all things shall be revealed, so that the evil shall be punished and the good shall be rewarded, and all people shall become subject under the dominion of God. All the work requires righteous chastisement and judgment to be achieved. Because man's corruption has reached its peak, and his disobedience has been too serious, only God's righteous disposition, which is principally one of chastisement and judgment, and is revealed during the last days, can fully transform and complete man. Only this disposition can expose evil and thus severely punish all the unrighteous. During the last days, only righteous judgment can classify man and bring man into a new realm. In this way, the entire age is brought to an end through God's righteous disposition of judgment and chastisement. These words are too authoritative. After reading Almighty God's Word, we can see a truth that we can understand. Corrupt mankind won't be able to receive the truth and life if they don't go through God's judgment. And so, they won't lose their sinful nature and find salvation.
And even worse, they'll never know God's righteousness or see what he has and is. Man's been corrupted by Satan for thousands of years, and they all have a satanic nature. They've all been arrogant, deceitful, and so reckless. So then, even though we believe in God, we can't help it, and we often find ourselves sinning against God. What this shows us is that man doesn't have a true knowledge or fear of God. We know that's a fact. For such a person who's trapped in satanic disposition to be fully obedient to God and be utterly convinced, what method do you think that God should use to achieve this result? Judgment and chastisement. Could be judgment and chastisement. What do you think it should be? You see, man must experience God's judgment. So they see God's righteous, majestic, and wrathful disposition. And they see the truth God has expressed, which is what he uses to judge and cleanse mankind. Only then will they be conquered, fall down completely before God, and then truly repent. They'll start to understand the truth, practice the truth, and gradually change their disposition to be compatible with God. But why couldn't believers from the age of grace get the chance to truly know themselves? Why did they not fear God and lived in sin so often, rebelling and fighting against God like it wasn't a big deal? It's because God hadn't performed His judgment at the last days yet. Without experiencing God's judgment, mankind can't get to know his own satanic nature, and his arrogant disposition will never be able to change. He won't be able to achieve true obedience and fear to God. Some of you might still be wondering, how can we take up the cross and then follow the Lord if we don't obey Him? In the Age of Grace, people gave up everything to pay the price and work for the Lord. They thought they would all receive a crown, be rewarded, and enter the Kingdom of Heaven. But these people, did they truly love and obey the Lord? Did the life dispositions of these people really change? Did they really achieve compatibility with the Lord? So then why, when mankind is spending for the Lord, do they try to make it a transaction? to utilize and deceive him. God observes the depths of man's heart. Man looks at the outside, God the inside. Despite how good they look, they may not be after God's heart. Therefore, God's work of judgment, beginning with the house of God in the last days, is the work that's targeted at man's satanic nature for thoroughly cleansing and saving mankind. It oh, looks like it might be God's judgment after all. Only after we experience God's judgment in the last days can we see man's nature and the real situation as to how mankind has been corrupted by Satan and how man's actions have been in Satan's image and so inhuman. When that happens, we all feel ashamed and fall down before God. We repent to God and feel remorseful. We never again feel like we're stronger or better. We start to despise and curse ourselves, and we choose not to live in our corrupt disposition. And subconsciously, we become honest, losing all of our insolence. But also, we see for ourselves that God's disposition is too righteous, too holy, and truly unoffendable. We can't help but develop a reverence for God. We won't do as we please or say what we want for fear of angering Him. We begin to forsake the flesh, practice the truth, and through all of that, we change the way we see things. Our disposition gradually starts to change, and we're willing to obey God's arrangements. We're no longer controlled by our desires for blessings. We live out the likeness of a real man. After we've experienced God's judgment, we all really appreciate that Almighty God uttering words to judge us and chastise us is not meant to punish or destroy us, but instead it's meant to perfect us and cleanse us. Because, you see, this is how God grants salvation and mercy, and how He shows His genuine love for mankind. Amen. Their fellowship has been very practical. Yes, praise the Lord. And also, 
We have seen the work of judgment beginning with the house of God is targeted at all those who accept Almighty God's work in the last days. God will make a group of overcomers before disaster. These people will then receive God's promise and enter the kingdom of heaven. As for those wicked people who resist God, God won't perform judgment on any of them, nor will He try to perfect any of them. Instead, He will simply let the great disasters arrive and destroy them. So now, we're all capable of seeing that Almighty God's judgment to His chosen is purifying, saving, and perfecting. And to those antichrists and truly wicked ones who hate truth and oppose God, it is condemnation and destruction. We all know that this is the absolute truth. That's right. Today's fellowship has enlightened my heart. My thoughts on God's judgment in the last days were full of made-up ideas. I thought of God's judgment as punishment and curse for man. Praise the Lord, because now I know that God's judgment of corrupt mankind is so He can cleanse them and save them and take them into a beautiful destination. <sighs> God's judgment of mankind has such significance for man's salvation. This is God's most genuine and truest love for mankind. That's right. Praise God. Yes, praise, praise God. God. That's right. Mankind's corruption in the last days runs too deep. They're all licentious, weary of the truth, hate the truth, and they all ignore positive things. They don't have an ounce of righteousness. Even worse, they worship evil, invert justice, and take the evil path. Even those who have believed in the Lord for years are following the sinful ways of the world, sinning against Lord, and failing to keep the Lord's word. Yes. yes. If God doesn't rescue mankind, then man will all have to perish for resisting God. God's way of using judgment in the last days to cleanse us and save us all is necessary. They say that bitter medicine cures the disease, and that is like God's love. It's true. Man's corruption is deep. Wanting God's kingdom by grace is indulging in fantasy. Yes. We must let go. Praise the Lord. Almighty God perfects those true believers in Him through His judgment and also through His chastisement and exposes those who would resist Him, then rewards good, punishes evil, and ends the age. Only God has this kind of authority and power. It seems Almighty God is truly the second coming of the Lord. We finally see the one we've been waiting for. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord. Okay, let me ask. Sister Zhang, Sister Yang, if I may, you've just explained to us, in a very clear way, the purpose of God's judgment work. In the Age of Grace, no matter how long they had believed, people lived in a sin-and-confessed state, unable to escape their sin. Only those who accept God's judgment work can receive the truth and life. God performing His judgment work is so important for our being saved and entering God's kingdom. Yes. Yes. Amen! Yes. Yes. But now, what I want to understand is, how does God perform His judgment to save mankind and cleanse us in the last days? Please tell us some more about this. Yes. That's right. This is something we urgently need to know in examining the true way. Please, sisters, tell us more about this, if you can. Yes. Okay. Sister Chi, your question is very practical. People who seek and examine the true way want to understand how Almighty God performs His judgment in the last days. Almighty God has spoken a lot in regard to this aspect of the truth. Let's read a few passages of God's Word. Okay. 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 Almighty God says, when God becomes flesh this time, His work is to express His disposition primarily through chastisement and judgment. Using this as the foundation, He brings more truth to man, shows more ways of practice, and so achieves His objective of conquering man and saving man from His corrupt disposition. 
This is what lies behind the work of God in the Age of Kingdom. In the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, reveal the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity as well as the wisdom and disposition of God, and so on. These words are all focused on the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that reveal how man spurns God are spoken in regards to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. When God does the work of judgment, He does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words, but carries out revelation, dealing, and pruning over the long term. Such manner of revelation, dealing, and pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth that man does not possess at all. Only such manner of work is deemed judgment. Only through such judgment can man be persuaded, be thoroughly convinced into submission to God, and gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the truth about his rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God, of the purpose of God's work, and of the mysteries that could not be understood by man. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment. For the substance of such work is actually the work of opening up the truth, way, and life of God to all those who have faith in Him. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Let's read another passage. I can read it. Almighty God says, God has many means of making man perfect. He employs all manner of environments to deal with the corrupt disposition of man and uses various things to lay man bare. In one regard he deals with man, in another he lays man bare, and in another he reveals man, digging out and revealing the mysteries in the depth of man's heart and showing man his nature by revealing many of his states. God makes man perfect through many methods, through revelation, dealing, refinement, and chastisement, so that man may know that God is practical. Oh, oh, so God uses this many means of making man perfect. Brothers and sisters, when God works to judge and cleanse mankind in the last days, He uses many aspects of truth to judge man's satanic nature, which resists and rebels against God, and show mankind God's holy, righteous disposition, tolerating no offense. Through the judgment of God's word, man clearly sees the truth of his deep corruption by Satan and really gets to know of God's holy essence and righteous disposition intolerant of offense. They produce reverence for God, so they escape the bondage of sin and thus achieve God's salvation. Oh, yes. When we read Almighty God's Word, we really feel that God is judging us and exposing us face to face. And we can all feel that God's Word, just like a double-edged sword, 
is judging and exposing our God-resisting satanic nature. We clearly see the truth that we're deeply corrupted by Satan and that our nature is arrogant, despicable, and deceitful. Though we believe in God, we won't let God be exalted. Our heart doesn't fear God. We often try to deceive God and others. Though we believe in God, we worship man. If we have status, we want to show ourselves off and build ourselves up so that people will listen to us. We try to confront God and split from Him, setting up our own kingdoms. When we face disaster, we even blame God and oppose Him. When God does His new work beyond our imaginations, then we resort to acting like the Pharisees back when Jesus was on earth, delimiting God and judging God. And if we spend a little, do some hard work, or suffer a little, we even try to act self-important, demanding more blessings from God. If our desires are somehow not fulfilled, then we act negatively or slow down and quit work. Our corruption by Satan devil runs way too deep. We don't live out the image of human beings. We're the embodiment of Satan. When we face the truth of our corruption by Satan, we're all deeply ashamed and remorseful. And we appreciate that God's holiness can't be defiled and that His righteous disposition can't be offended. We can't help but fall down before God, regret our evil ways, despise our satanic nature, and repent to God. We're willing to obey God's judgment on us, perform our duty as His creatures, and obey everything that God has arranged. This is the result of the judgment of Almighty God's Word on His Chosen. Now everyone, we all know after we have experienced God's judgment that God not only uses words to judge and expose us based on our actual situations, He also sets up environments and people to test and reveal us to practically prune, deal with, and discipline us. Through actually experiencing God's judgment on us and His dealing, we see that our nature is too stubborn, too arrogant. If we don't experience such judgment, our disposition will not achieve change. Sometimes, we don't practice the truth while doing our duty. Through our arrogant nature, we do what we want, exalting ourselves and building ourselves up, making our spirits turn dark and unable to sense God. Our hearts hurt and we're refined. When this happens, God's word will reproach us inside. Sometimes God sets these things up to deal with us so that we return to God to reflect on our actions. And we recognize the arrogance of our great ambitions in wanting to control people. When we see our nature as that of the Archangel, then our hearts can't help but tremble in fear. We know that God's disposition is unoffendable and fall down before Him to repent and to pray. When this happens, God's words will encourage us and comfort us and make us understand God's effort of salvation. Yeah, right. So we won't be passive and weak. We'll have confidence to seek the truth and change our disposition. After experiencing much of God's actual dealing and pruning and His discipline, our arrogant disposition is somewhat changed. We become much more humble and less insolent. And we can take initiative to open up completely and know our corruption. We do our best to exalt God, testify to God, we feel that living like this puts our hearts at ease and brings joy. The work of God's salvation is so practical. Yes. Yes. It's through experiencing God's judgment and chastisement that we now have such a real knowledge of God's righteous disposition and know the kind of person God loves and the kind He hates, the kind of person He'll save and the kind He'll eliminate, the kind of person He'll bless and the kind He'll curse, 
And we've also learned that God does watch over everything and dominates all. God is right beside us. He's always there, actually guiding us and saving us. That's right. We appreciate the truth he expresses to corrupt mankind is his judgment and chastisement, his inspection and his cleansing. With the fear of God in our hearts and a change in our corrupt disposition, we can learn how to seek the truth, practice the truth, and obey God, gradually living out the real man's likeness. The changes we've achieved today are the result of experiencing Almighty God's judgment of the last days. It's salvation, and it's how God shows His love for us. Amen. It seems the this words of Almighty God so can likely. cleanse and save mm -hmm. This people. fellowship is so helpful. It's given us a lot of edification. Praise the Lord. In the past, we knew that the Lord was coming to judge mankind, but no one could ever properly explain to us how He would actually do it. Today, after listening to you, I can understand it. God performs His judgment through expressing the truth. And it's only through accepting and obeying God's judgment that we can gain truth and life and cast off our sinful nature. God's work to save us all is so very practical. Yes. Yes. Praise, Praise, God. Praise God. They've been able to receive the words. Absolutely. Praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is great. Praise the Lord. After listening to your fellowship, I understand that Almighty God uses the expression of truth and His righteous disposition to perform His judgment in the last days and to resolve man's sinful nature so that they can achieve salvation. And now I can finally see that no matter how long we've believed, if we don't experience God's final judgment, then we won't be able to know our own nature and essence, or get rid of our corruption and be saved by God. Now, sisters, please, I was hoping you could tell us some more. We all want to accept God's judgment, but tell us, how do we have to experience His judgment so that we can receive the truth and life, get rid of our sinful nature and achieve salvation? Yes, yes, yes. yes. How to experience God's final judgment in order to receive the truth and life, shed our sinful nature, and be saved into His kingdom? This type of question is very important because it involves the major issues of mankind's end and destination. To understand this aspect of the truth, we should read a few passages of God's Word. Okay. Almighty God says, True faith in God means experiencing the words and work of God based on a belief that God holds sovereignty over all things. So you shall be freed of your corrupt disposition, shall fulfill the desire of God, and shall come to know God. Only through such a journey can you be said to believe in God. The current process of speaking is the process of conquering. How exactly should people cooperate? By eating and drinking these words effectively and understanding them. People cannot become conquered by themselves. They must, from eating and drinking these words, come to know their corruption and filth, their rebelliousness and unrighteousness, and fall down before God. If you can understand God's will and then put it into practice, and further have the vision, and if you can completely obey these words and not exercise any of your own choices, then you will have been conquered and it will be these words that have conquered you. Almighty God says, paying attention to eating and drinking God's words, paying attention to seeking the truth and God's intentions in His words, and finding out God's will in all things, this is the most fundamental and crucial means of practice. 
devoting all of your mind and body to God's words primarily involves seeking the truth and God's intentions in His words, paying attention to finding out God's will and understanding and gaining more truths in God's words. Achieving the knowledge of God's disposition and His loveliness and knowing the various corrupt states of man, his corrupt nature, and what he truly lacks, and fulfilling God's various requirements of man in order to satisfy God. Peter can correctly put all these things into practice according to God's words, and nothing will be more after God's heart and there will be no better cooperation in experiencing God's work. Yes, if believers don't practice and experience God's word, then that doesn't count as well. As you can God. see, we as believers need to understand what believing in God means. Believing in God means to practice His word and experience His work, to understand the truth and to live it out in reality. That's the process of believing in God. God's end-time work is to judge us through His Word if we want to cleanse our corrupt disposition so that we can achieve God's salvation. We must first put in some effort into God's Word genuinely. We have to eat and drink God's Word and accept the judgment and revelations there in His Word. No matter how much God's Word could cut us or be harsh or how much it makes us suffer, just remember that God's Word is all the truth and the reality of life that mankind should enter into. Every utterance of God's Word is meant to cleanse us and change us, to help us shed our corruption and reach salvation, and then to help us understand the truth and achieve knowledge of God. You see, we must learn to accept the judgment and pruning of God's Word. If we want to gain the truth in God's Word, we must be willing to suffer in obeying the truth in God's Word. We must seek the truth and try to find it in God's Word, feel out God's will, and try to know ourselves. We must reflect on God's Word to know our own arrogance, deceitfulness, and selfishness. How we trade with God, extort God, deceive God, distort the truth and other sinful actions as well as other impurities within our belief, desires for blessings. Through this way, we'll gradually get to know the truth behind our corruption and the essence of our nature. That's right. After we understand more of the truth, our knowledge of God will grow much deeper, and then we'll know what kind of person God likes and dislikes, what kind He'll save or eliminate, who He'll use and who He'll bless. Once we see these things, we'll start to understand God's disposition. These are the results of experiencing God's judgment of His Word. Anyone who pursues the truth take note of experiencing the judgment of God's Word, trying to seek the truth in everything and to practice God's Word and obey God. And gradually, these people will start to understand the truth and enter the reality in experiencing God's Word and achieve perfection and salvation. As for those who don't love the truth, although they can recognize God's appearance from the truth that God expressed in His Word, they think that there's a way for them to definitely achieve salvation if they sacrifice a little and do their duty, so they can't receive the truth after believing in God for many years. They might understand a few doctrines, but they think they have the whole truth and reality. They're lying to themselves, and soon they'll be eliminated by God. Yes, yes they will. They'll be it eliminated. seems that reading God's Word is important to knowing the truth. Yes, only by knowing and practicing the truth can we have reality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sister Jung, I want to keep listening. Won't you continue to talk with us? Sure. Yeah, we also need to know. Tell us, please. How do we experience God's work to help us achieve salvation? Let's read a little more of Almighty God's Word. Okay. 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 I can read. Almighty God says, 
Man's life can only grow after putting God's words into practice, not after simply reading them. If you believe that you need only understand God's words in order to have life and stature, then your knowledge is deviant. The true understanding of God's words is achieved while putting the truth into practice. You should understand the words that understanding the truth is achieved through putting the truth into practice. In his belief in God, Peter sought to satisfy God in all that he did and sought to obey all that came from God. Without the slightest complaint, he was able to accept chastisement and judgment as well as refinement, tribulation, and lack in his life, none of which could alter his love of God. Is this not the ultimate love of God? Is this not the fulfillment of the duty of a creature of God? Chastisement, judgment, tribulation, you are capable of achieving obedience unto death. And this is what should be achieved by a creature of God. This is the purity of the love of God. If man can achieve this much, then he is a qualified creature of God. And there is nothing which better satisfies the desire of the Creator. If what you seek is the truth, what you put into practice is the truth, and what you attain is a change in your disposition, then the path that you tread is the right one. If what you seek is the blessings of the flesh, and what you put into practice is the truth of your own conceptions, and if there is no change in your disposition, and you are not at all obedient to God in the flesh, and you still live in vagueness, then what you seek will surely take you to hell. For the path that you walk is the path of failure. Whether you will be made perfect or eliminated depends on your own pursuit, which is also to say that success or failure depends on the path that a man walks. Let's read another passage of God's okay. Word, page 115. Almighty God says, If man can truly enter the reality of God's Word, and he can do so in God's requirements, he is one perfected by God. It can be said that the word and work of God have borne full fruit in him. The word of God has become his life. He has gained the truth and is able to live by the word of God. The nature of his flesh, the foundation of his original existence then begins to shake and collapse. Only once man has the word of God as his life does he become a new man. The word of God has become his life. The vision of God's work, God's requirements for man, God's revelations of man, the standard of a true life which God asks man to reach, these are now his life. And he lives by these words, by these truths. He has been perfected by the word of God. He has been reborn in the word of God. He has become a new man in the word of God. Almighty God has stated the path for man's salvation and entrance into the kingdom of heaven very clearly. Almighty God says, man's life can only grow after putting God's words into practice. This one line is the truth, too practical. That's right. Believers who don't practice God's word will not receive the truth. Someone without the truth is someone without life. Almighty God told us about how Peter actively pursued the truth to be perfected. Peter was someone who pursued the truth. 
He not only sought out how to truly love God, but also focused on his dispositional change. His primary practice was to obey Lord's judgment and accept the refinement and trials given to him. Even if the Lord gave him to Satan, he would still be obedient to death. He was crucified upside down for the Lord, providing a resounding testimony. Yes. Peter put a lot of diligence into his belief in God, using heart to love God and obey God. He put a lot of effort into preaching and especially focused on practicing the truth and entering the reality. That's why Peter was perfected and ultimately received God's approval. Yes. God. Oh, yes. We should suffer in our faith. In accordance with Peter's testimony, all believers have to pursue the truth if they want to achieve salvation and put effort into reading God's word, learning more about the truth and God's will, and practicing the truth in our lives. By pursuing this way, we can see the truth more and more clearly and have more ways to use it. Before we know it, we'll enter the reality. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. Thank, Thank the Lord. Lord. If mankind will only be satisfied with doctrines, then they won't be able to really enter the reality. The more doctrines they know, the more arrogant they become. Their natures will never change, despite believing in God for many years. They'll end up thinking that believing in God doesn't mean anything. Can such people then receive the truth and real life? Believers in God and religion will all go down this path, and they will never receive God's approval. We know that for certain. That's right. When experiencing Almighty God's work, those who don't have the love for truth will want to avoid the judgment of God's word. That feeling will only make them move further away from God, especially when it hurts them. In these cases, how can these people gain the truth? But people who love the truth are willing to suffer and withstand anything for the chance to gain it. They can obey even when what they read from God's word can be harsh. They also learn how they can stand firm in the face of difficult trials. Even if they lose their families, freedom, or lives, they can still stand witness for God. People like this can surely obtain the truth and receive God's approval after they have experienced His work. It seems it's hard for us to enter God's kingdom. We must truly experience God's judgment and chastisement and endure all sorts of trials and refinements. Unlike what we might think, we can't just accept Almighty God's name, read a little from His Word, live a church life, and fulfill our duty a little, and expect to be saved. Yes, yes. God is so righteous, and He's so faithful. However crafty man is, he can't deceive God. That's right. We used to dream that we would be raptured. But today, after your good fellowship, we now know that entering the kingdom of heaven won't be that simple. The kingdom of heaven, where God resides, is a holy place. And people today are too evil, no humanity, and with black hearts. Entering the kingdom of heaven without judgment from God is just wishful thinking. Praise the Lord. Through your fellowship today, I understand that it's only through accepting and seeking the truth, through honestly experiencing God's judgment, and living out God's holy word. Can man have his life disposition changed and then shed away their sinful nature to gain salvation? That's right. It seems if believers are careless in their faith and don't seek the truth, even if they believe in Almighty God, then they ultimately won't be able to be cleansed and saved. Oh, yes. 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 Now, sisters, I'm afraid I have yet another question. The Chinese government and religious groups have continued to persecute the Church of Almighty God. You must have faced a lot of trials and tribulations and refinements. So then, how do you get through all that? Please tell us how so we can know. Yes, we yeah, yes, please tell us more. We want to know. Even though everything you've said makes sense, have you any real experiences or testimonies that might convince us? Please, fellowship with us. Believing in God and following Him in the country ruled by CCP is very hard. After experiencing God's work for several years, I've truly come to appreciate 
that everything expressed by Almighty God is the truth with authority and power, and that it can rescue mankind from Satan's influence, and it can cleanse us, perfect us, and change us. I used to be the leader of a house church, and I became well known for many years of faith in God. The CCP police often came to my house to interrogate me. My family and friends abandoned me. I was persecuted and hated and even my neighbor slandered my name. After accepting God's work of the last days, I was persecuted further by the government at the time when I was fulfilling my duty. And then they made me a national fugitive and hunted me everywhere. No matter where I would go, I was in danger of being captured. And it wasn't just that. The leaders of other religious groups would often yell insults at us and even get people to beat us and call the police to arrest us. I couldn't understand why they did so, why people who believe and who talked about love, patience, and peace would hate us and persecute us, believers in Almighty God, and put us into the hands of the CCP. Does that sound like something a believer of the Lord would do? Weren't they afraid of displeasing the Lord? While facing this persecution, my heart was weak and I was hurt, feeling that it was difficult to believe in God. Not only was I abandoned by people of religion, but also I might be captured and imprisoned where I could be tortured or even lose my life. I thought spreading the gospel of the kingdom is too dangerous. And it was while I was feeling so weak that I saw these words of Almighty God. How will you pass on your seeings and experiences to those pitiable, poor, and devout religious believers who hunger and thirst for righteousness and are waiting for you to shepherd them. Are you aware of the burden you shoulder, your commission, and your responsibility? Where is your historic sense of mission? They are poor, pitiable, blind, and at a loss, wailing in the darkness where is the way? How they yearn for the light, like a shooting star, to suddenly descend and disperse the force of darkness that has oppressed men for so many years. Who can know just how anxiously they hope and how they pine day and night for this? These men who suffer deeply remain imprisoned in the dungeons of darkness without hope of release even on the day that the light flashes. When will they weep no longer? These fragile spirits who have never been granted rest are truly suffering such misfortune. They have long been sealed off by the ruthless ropes and the history that is frozen in place. Who has ever heard the sound of their wailing? Who has ever seen their miserable visage? Have you ever thought how grieved and anxious God's heart is? How can he bear to see the innocent mankind he created with his own hands suffering such torment? After all, mankind are the unfortunates that have been poisoned. Though they have survived to this day, who would have thought that they have long been poisoned by the evil one? Have you forgotten that you are one of the victims? Out of your love for God, are you not willing to strive to save those who have survived? Are you not willing to use all your effort to repay the God who loves mankind like his own flesh and blood? How do you interpret 
being used by God to live your extraordinary life. Do you really have the resolution and confidence to live out a meaningful life of a pious, God-serving person? Like a double-edged sword, every line of God's word cut down deep into my heart. I thought about my actions and deeds, how I was so full of happiness when I had been blessed. But then I complained about God and even thought about betraying God, all because I had suffered. I saw that my sacrifice and belief in God were based on receiving His blessings. It wasn't out of my love for God or out of my loyalty. I was just doing a deal with God. I had lost my conscience and humanity. Think about how God became flesh and came down to this earth to save His beloved creation, how much He has suffered. The slander from the religious world He faces and the persecution from the CCP also. He still works among us, facing the danger no matter what the cost is, in the hope that we could all be united with Him in our hearts taking before God those still under the deception of pastors and elders, those who have fallen in the dark, bitterly awaiting the return of the Lord Jesus and bringing them before God to listen to God's voice and receive the supply of God's living water of life. God is so selfless, and His love for man is all too real. Yes. yes. In the beginning, wasn't I someone who was also deceived and under the control of those pastors who had fallen in the dark, enduring pain? But now today, I can come before God and enjoy the rich supply of God's Word and live in God's light. And isn't it because of Almighty God that I've turned to Him through hearing others who took the time to preach the gospel? If I have a heart and a soul, I should consider God's wishes and endure all the suffering to spread His gospel and repay His love. Otherwise, I have no humanity and I'm not worthy of living before God. So like this, through experiencing the judgment of His word, I gradually understood the truth and all of the effort God has put into saving mankind. As His creations who were created in His image, we should all be thinking of God rather than our desires. No matter how much the CCP hunts us and no matter how much the religious leaders condemn us, we should fulfill our duty to Him no matter what pain we might have to endure. Amen. Amen. So we can have more meaningful lives. Amen. Amen. The change I have achieved as of today is the result of experiencing the judgment of God's holy word. Praise, Praise God. God. That's right. That's right. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I've come to understand that God knows how to use the hunting and persecution of the CCP satanic regime and religious circles to refine His chosen people. Not only does this let us see the devil essence of the CCP and Antichrist leaders who want nothing more than to swallow us whole, it shows us that God's wisdom is exercised based on the schemes of Satan, the devil. Amen. God maneuvers all to perfect his overcomers. Amen. We might face all kinds of trials, tribulations, hardship, and pain. But then, we have truth and life. If we're perfected by God into overcomers, never forget it's all God's grace and blessing. Amen. Amen. That's how believers should believe and how humans should behave. Believers of Almighty God are the best soldiers for Christ! Wonderful! Your experience with God's judgment in your life is practical. Through your experiences, I've come to realize Almighty God's words are all the truth, and His words can change and cleanse us. And your testimony has helped us see hope for believing in God. Amen! Because we know, without experiencing God's judgment, mankind is unable to change its disposition or find salvation. 
That's right. <sighs> Pardon me. I didn't know that you aren't just hunted by the CCP alone. Even the religious world treats you like an enemy, spying on you for the CCP devil and calling the police. When they capture gospel preachers, they do what they can to brutalize them. I will never be able to understand it. They believe in God too. Then why so much animosity? You faced such brutal persecution of the CCP satanic regime and religious world. You can't go home. You faced all sorts of hardships, trials and refinements. And now you have the true faith in and knowledge of God. You've escaped Satan's dark influences, and you can sincerely spend for God. You can turn to God and be gained by him. This is a victorious testimony. This completely fulfills the prophecy in Revelation. These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And you are the people who have truly been brought before God's throne, overcomers who have walked out of great tribulation. And you do deserve it. You've made me so convinced. Yes, true overcomers are born from experiencing Almighty God's judgment through various trials and tribulations. God's work might not shake the planet, but he has already made a group of overcomers in China. He really is almighty and wise. Here we were, still waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds to rapture us. If we don't accept God's final judgment, then won't we all be completely abandoned? Yes. yes. The testimonies you've shared are moving and much too real. God has made a group of overcomers in the last days. People who are like you are the ones who have been blessed the most. I have looked forward to the Lord's return, but I couldn't discern the real truth. I thought obeying pastors and elders was obeying God. I allowed myself to be deceived by religious leaders. Not just rejecting Almighty God's judgment in the last days, but even calling the police on them. <gasps> the believers who bear witness to Almighty God. I endangered them. Doesn't this sell out the Lord and our friends? I have committed such a sin. Oh Lord, do I still have a chance of accepting your salvation? I believed for years too but I didn't understand the truth at all. I never had a place for the Lord in my heart. I just believed in what my pastors told me. I was worshiping, looking up to, and following man. I put all of my faith in my elders. I was bewitched by them and didn't know it. <laughs> I even condemned those who testified for Almighty God. And I called, I even called the police on them too. <laughs> I watched as the CCP took those believers away with my own uh, I'm guilty of such a huge sin. Isn't this the sin that the Pharisees committed? when they condemned and persecuted Jesus. 
Lord, I really committed such a huge sin. I'm begging you to find it in your heart to grant me your forgiveness. We've been so foolish and blind, not listening to God's word, and instead believing in rumors spread by religious leaders, rejecting Almighty God's gospel. We've all been victimized by these antichrists. We almost lost the opportunity for salvation. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thanks to these two sisters who have come to give their testimony on Almighty God's judgment, giving us the chance to be brought before God's throne. Thanks be to God. They witness for Almighty God, and they're also so adorable. They are the people with the most loving hearts. We should be more loyal to God like they Amen. are. Amen. 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 Let's work to rescue our brothers and sisters from the hands of Antichrist and evil servants. We can't keep letting ourselves be controlled by our leaders. That's right. I agree. Very soon we're going to organize a meeting so that everyone can listen to Almighty God's kingdom gospel Amen. in the last days. Okay. Amen. We must hurry. God's work of perfecting his group of overcomers will be completed soon. Once God's work has been finished, the disasters will then come down. Yes. If we don't accept God's judgment work and miss out on the chance to be made into overcomers, then surely we will end up weeping amid the disasters. Oh, oh yes. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. Right now, those who truly believe in God are all returning to be with him while those who already resist and condemn Almighty God have all fallen into darkness, lost in despair. The gospel of the descent of the kingdom has already started expanding Amen. Amen. throughout all of mainland China, becoming known by everyone. Also, it's spreading to other countries around the world. Yes. Almighty God's word is being accepted and witnessed by more and more people. This will soon become a trend that no evil force on earth is capable of stopping. Amen. Amen. And now, let's read a passage of God's Word. Okay. Allow me to read. Allow me to read. I want to read. Brothers and sisters, let's read it together. Okay. Almighty God says, We trust that no country or power can stand in the way of what God wishes to achieve. Those that obstruct God's work, resist the word of God, disturb and impair the plan of God, shall ultimately be punished by God. He who defies the work of God shall be sent to hell. Any country that defies the work of God shall be destroyed. Any nation that rises up to oppose the work of God shall be wiped from this earth and shall cease to exist. I urge the people of all nations, countries, and even industries to listen to the voice of God, to behold the work of God, to pay attention to the fate of mankind, thus making God the most holy, the most honorable, the highest and only object of worship, and allowing the whole of mankind to live under the blessing of God, just as the descendants of Abraham lived under the promise of Jehovah, and just as Adam and Eve, who were originally made by God, lived in the Garden of Eden. The work of God is like mildly Surgically No one can detain him, and no one can halt his footsteps. Only those who listen carefully to his words and who seek and thirst for him can follow his footsteps and receive his promise. Those who do not shall be subjected to overwhelming disaster and deserved punishment. Almighty God's words are so practical. His authority, power, disposition will not be overcome by any enemy force, no matter how evil. Amen. God's plan for saving all of mankind is happening and won't be stopped by any country or any force on earth. Amen. 
When he came to earth to redeem us, our Lord Jesus was crucified by those in power and the religious world. However, God's wisdom is exercised based on the schemes of Satan. Amen. No matter how madly those enemy forces tried their best to condemn and fight, the gospel of Jesus still managed to spread throughout the world. It's well, that's all right. Thanks, Thanks the Lord. Lord. Thanks Today, the incarnate Almighty God has expressed the truth for the salvation of mankind to start judging and cleansing all of mankind. He has also suffered resistance, fierce condemnation, hard persecution from religious world and the CCP. But now, the gospel of Almighty God has still spread throughout mainland China Amen. and is still currently spreading to other countries and places. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank, the Lord. Lord. Thank the Lord. Today, we have experienced a lot of hardships and obstacles in our witness and testimony of the gospel. We don't know how many are now in prison or how many might have died in prison. We don't know how many people have had their families torn apart or lost their homes or relatives. And we don't know how many have been viciously persecuted, beaten, or buried alive. It's like the persecution of the disciples by religious circles in the Age of Grace. Some were beheaded. Others were stoned to death. Some were crucified upside down. And even more were exiled. But under the guidance of Almighty God's Word, his chosen people are still full of confidence, marching on until the end. Amen. No matter how many people are captured, God's chosen always advance. If one group of people is imprisoned, another group will rise up immediately. Yes. They've put aside their earthly things, devoting their entire lives to spreading the gospel. They finally spread the gospel across all of China, bearing a beautiful testimony for God. Amen. Amen. And now, God's chosen people are making an effort to produce various videos that testify to God and delivering the Kingdom Gospel to countries all around the world through the Internet. The Kingdom Gospel's expansion to the entire world is now right before our eyes. It's there for everyone to see. Amen. Amen. Through our real experiences, we have seen the authority and mightiness of God's Word, allowing us to appreciate God's true wisdom and His unique authority and power. Amen. Amen! With God backing us from behind and His Word leading and guiding us, we are able to defeat Satan in every single spiritual battle. Amen! Amen. Enabling those who long for God's appearance to return before God's Amen. throne. Amen. Thanks be to God. All the glory be to Almighty God. Amen! Amen. Thank the Lord! Yeah. 